All right, this set of videos is going to help to kind of demystify one of the things that schools all over struggle with, and that is how to use Google Documents, Google Drive specifically, to keep your students and classrooms organized. And there's always a question about sharing and how this is going to work to, to do this. And I'm going to give you kind of a simple scenario, which I think will help us create a folder that students can turn work into that will then be instantly accessible by the teacher, but not necessarily accessible by any of the other students. And there's a quick way to do this. And it involves your students creating folders and your teacher um, creating a folder and, and moving some things around. Um, but it's only one time per year that you're gonna have to do this. So the first um, step is really to have your students each create a folder in which to put their work. So student one in my example and student two in my example are going to create their own folders. Now inside of this folder, they are going to have um, documents and work that they've been doing um, as represented by those little fancy drawings. Perfect. And then your teacher is going to create a folder for themselves. So let's use the example of uh, first period language arts. Student one is going to um, maybe name this folder student one language arts period one. Student two would name it student two language arts period two. Teacher would name this language arts period one. And what happens is um, this folder is going to be shared with the teacher. This folder will also be shared with teacher. So the teacher is going to end up with a bunch of shared folders in their file. In there, it'll be in the shared with me section, which is uh, this little guy right up here, and they're going to end up with a, a ton of files in there. And what they're going to do is they're going to drag each of these into their main folder. And what that'll do is it'll put each student's individual folder inside of their very own folder. Now the benefit of doing this, if you have the students create the folder and share it with the teacher first, the teacher is going to have a private folder that's going to contain all of these shared folders inside of their folder. So when the teacher goes and, and opens on this folder here, they are going to see each of the students listed by name for that class section and they will be able to then click on that student and see all of the documents that exist within that student's file. This is probably one of the easier ways of setting this up because some of the other ways I've seen is where uh, teachers are trying to share folders with students and then what happens is everybody has access to everybody's files and it gets a little confusing. So this is kind of what we're gonna set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, minimize this and get this out of our way. And let's look at this. So I have a student one account here and I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder. And I'm gonna give this folder a name. Now this is one of the key parts to setting this up. Don't just let your students name their folders whatever they want to. Very much have a plan in place for what you're gonna have your folders be named. I always recommend that the folder name start with their name so that you can have um, their names listed in alphabetical order. And as a quick tip, um, use the naming system that's in your gradebook. So if you go into um, your gradebook, whether it's Infinite Campus or one of these other gradebooks that it's out there, go through there and see how the names, are they last name, comma, first name, are they first initial, last initial, how are they organized? Because if you can make them organized in the exact same way, it's very, very easy for your grading. So you know, just kind of keep that in mind. In this case, um, we're going to pretend that they use last name, then first name. So I'm going to say one, and then I'm going to say student for my folder name. So one student, and then um, I'm going to use that this is going to be period one, language arts. Let me go ahead and just capitalize one student here. Perfect. So what I've done is I've created a, a folder called one student period one language arts. Now, as I create this, your students are going to see this and they haven't shared this with anybody. 
when they click on the folder and they give it permissions, they're going to now share this with teacher, in my case, teacher one, and they're gonna go ahead and give that teacher editing privileges so that they can post stuff, take stuff out, do things within the constraints of that folder. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit um, send. Now, if you have a lot of students to set up, you might wanna tell them, hey, don't notify me via email. I don't really need your email. Um, that kind of saves some steps along the way. So we're gonna go ahead and say, okay. So now, uh, this particular student, student one, has created a folder called one student, period one, language arts. And they have shared it with me, the teacher, so now I have access to anything in that file folder. So let's go ahead now, and we're gonna switch over to student two and do the same thing. All right, so here I am, now I'm in student two. And remember, I'm switching back and forth so you can see what it looks like for the students and also for the teacher. So we're gonna go ahead and create our folder again. And remember, I determined that the naming context was gonna be uh, last name, then first name. So this is gonna be two, capital two, student, and it's period one, language arts. There we go. Now. Same thing applies here. The folder has been created. The step that students forget all the time is to share it. So you will have to have these discussions and teach them how to do it. We're gonna go ahead and share this folder and we're gonna share this folder with teacher one at, there we go. And we're gonna say can edit and we're not going to notify people. And we are done, so now two people have access to this folder and can do anything with that folder. There we go, so we have that all set up. Let's go ahead now and switch over to the teacher side to see what needs to happen there. All right, so I am now logged in as teacher one. And I, haven't, I don't really see anything when I log in. If they had left the emails, I might have some emails and things going on, but I don't have any folders set up. I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder. And this is where, for you, you're gonna wanna organize your folders in, in a way that makes sense to you. I usually did the period number first and then the subject. So period one, language art is going to be my name. I'm gonna create that. So now I have this folder, period one, language arts. Now, two students have shared files with me. In your classroom, it may be 20 some students that have shared files with you. And what I do is I just select the, the students here and I click and drag their folder right over top of the folder that I created. So I'm just gonna click and drag. So now, instead of having to go to the shared with me folder, I can go to the period one language arts class on my drive and I can see various students listed there and if I had 28 students I'd have all 28 students and they would be according to the name that's in my grade book meaning that if I look at my grade book and I'm missing a grade for um, Joe and and it's you know the top name in the list because his last name is like starts with an A I would be able to find it real easy because it's gonna match up with what my grade book says. So there, there are gonna be some consistencies there. So if I click on this folder, I now have access to that student's files. I can see anything that they have posted in there. And I also have a quick little reference for me up here at the top where it says student one is the owner, teacher one can edit. And this really shows me um, kind of the permissions. So if you see a student that has all of the other students listed, uh, you can maybe talk to them a little bit about not sharing those folders because what um, sometimes students do is they like to give each other access to it, especially if they're trying to circumvent some of your classroom rules. So you'll have a quick access to kind of see what's, what's going on there. So I hope this helps. This is going to get us started. So what this is step one in a process now of where when your students want to turn in work, what they're going to do is they're going to use their iPad and they're going to simply turn something in directly to one of these folders. And the minute they turn it into a folder, it's going to exist here and we're going to see it. So we're going to use the teacher account and then we're going to use a student account on an iPad in the following video so that you can see the process of how work could get done for your students.